history optional examination this question was asked in 2020 you can see this question the question says that the principles of enlightenment the principles of enlightenment the principles of enlightenment were in some ways a continuous of the discoveries and the theories of the scientific revolution okay Hello dear aspirant, welcome to Plutus Science. Today we are going to discuss previous year question paper from history optional paper. Okay, and today we have taken a uh, world history. So in this topic today we will discuss the first topic of the world history history optional that is a part of the history optional paper too. You already know that there are two paper in the history UPSC examination for optional paper. The paper one is ancient and medieval India and paper 2 is modern India and the world history. So world history, in the world history, the chapter 1 is related to enlightenment. That is a very complex topic to understand. But if you understand it properly, you will never for this topic. This is a very interesting topic. It is a part of political science, political theory also. Okay. So today I have taken this topic to discuss that is a enlightenment. Okay. This enlightenment came in Europe in the 17th and the 18th century and this had influenced the politics of the modern world also. So let us discuss what is enlightenment and what is not. How should we understand? What are the questions have been asked in UPSC civil service history optional examination for the last 30 years. So first of all, let us discuss the syllabus that syllabus, what is the syllabus and what is the book we should offer for history optional. These are the three recommended books are enough. If you read one of the book and solve PYQ, you are able to clear your examination. You are able to score very good marks. This book is uh, Mastering Modern World. It is by Norman Law. Then we have the history of the modern world by B.B. Rao. Then we have the history of the modern world by Jen and Mathur. If you read one of these books, it is enough. Otherwise, my history notes for the Plutus IS, the Plutus IS history optional notes that is prepared by me only, that is enough to understand all the concept of world history. This, these notes along with the PPT that I discussed in the class is enough to prepare for history optional examination. You, you are not recommended to any read. Right? You are not recommended to read any book in the history optional paper, especially if you follow the PPTs that is shared by the Plutus IS and the history notes. Okay, These are the types of notes we discuss. So before we understand enlightenment, let us discuss that how enlightenment came into existence in the 17th century, 18th century Europe. Okay, In this topic, I would like to take you to the background of enlightenment. Okay, if I take you in the time, this is the in the time of around 9th century AD. And there is a decline of in the 9th century AD. What is happening in the 9th century AD? There is a decline of the Greco Roman Empire. Okay, there is a decline of Greco Roman empire okay this decline of the greco roman empire led to the some other events where will we go so from 9th century we go to the 14th century so from 9th century we go to the 14th century and this period in the in, in this period in the european history is defined as the era of feudalism so this decline of the greco roman empire this decline of the greco roman empire which led to the will lead to the rise of feudalism in this period. This will lead to the rise of feudalism and of feudalism in this period. This is a most important why to be called this period as a feudalism. There are different characteristics of this period. Let us discuss these characteristics. In the feudalism, there is just agrarian economy, first of all. Agrarian economy. Apart from agrarian economy, they are self-sufficient people, self-sufficient economy, self-sufficient economy. This will further lead, this will further lead you, the self-sufficient economy will further lead you that there is a slave, there is a slave society, okay? There is no trade, no trade, no market, you know? No trade, no market, no money, no currency. Right? 
no money economy and the most important out of this the most important out of this is the the lack of powerful state hai na lack of powerful state so whole europe in this period the whole europe in this period was divided into about 500 feudal states 500 feudal 500 फ्यूडल स्टेट्स में पूरा स्टार्ट डिवाइड 500 फ्यूडल स्टेट्स बाय दिस टाइम आफ्टर द फोर्टीन सेंचुरी समथिंग्स हैपन दिस पीपल दिस पीपल स्टार्टेड ग्रोइंग दौर एंड आफ्टर द फोर्टीन सेंचुरी देज ए राइज ऑफ ट्रेड सो राइज ऑफ ट्रेड लेट टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सिटीज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सिटीज फर्दर लेट टू द राइज ऑफ मिडिल क्लास राइज ऑफ मिडिल क्लास पीपल हु आर कॉल हु आर कॉल बुर्जवा इन यूरोप this will further lead to the giving of taxes so this through the taxes the state will become powerful so the taxes the state will become powerful and now a state can maintain army this is a permanent army this is a permanent army so maintaining of the permanent army will destroy the feudal lord they will they will destroy the feudal lord hai na they will destroy the feudal lord so this destroys so by this time so we are in the 14th century we are in the 14th century when feudalism started to be declined and this had taken a period of 200 years 200 years to decline the feudalism okay and in the in this time that is the 15th and the 16th century there is a very important thing came in the 14th century so from the 14th century from the 14th century to the 16th century to the 16th century this is a time period when in europe there is a very important concept that is called renaissance okay so in this time the important concept came into existence in europe that is renaissance then you will ask me what is renaissance renaissance is about revival of the past the renaissance philosophers claim that the feudal lords were the barbarian people their uncivilized their unstatic their art and culture was not good they they were not progressive so they have challenged that this is a medieval period so the feudal lord period from the 9th century that you are saying to the 14th century it is defined in europe as a medieval period they are the uncivilized barbarian people and they said that we should go back to our ancient past the past means in this period they wanted to go back to their classical age hai na they wanted to go back to their the renaissance clearly means rebirth okay rebirth and these people wanted to go back to their classical past which were there in the greco roman empire before the 9th century ad what do you mean by classical past it means that they were doing paintings they were writing books they were translating geometry history polity mathematics and na treaties of laws and all the so many writings were translated by these people so many paintings were done so many architectures monuments were developed by these people which were related and similar to the classical age of the greco roman empire so this is a renaissance so renaissance gave the rise of the modern ideas so these people said that we are modern the renaissance people said that we are modern then what happened in the 16th century a very important things happened by this time so we are in the 16th century so in the 16th century especially there is a particular date this date is called 1517 1517 there is a very important person called martin luther okay martin luther came into existence and he had written a he had written a 95 thesis 95 thesis which is submitted to the church which is submitted to the church and church had to respond the questions asked the church was very much challenged because of its erudatory activities they were very much atrocities why church church has land church had army church was controlling education okay church was getting taxes so we can say church was a very powerful person apart from it the church were blamed for the selling the for the selling of indulgences selling of indul genses do you know what is this indulgences the clear meaning of indulgences is that you will not after death that is related to the most salvation hai na that after death you will not have to go into the examination 
for going into hell or heaven ha na there is a point na in the life in the human being that if you have done sins you if you have done something bad in the life you will go into hell agar aapne acha kiya hai to you will go into heaven so if you purchase this indulgences from the church you are directly landing into the heaven ha this is a ticket to the heaven so this sale was criticized by martin luther and other people that how church can how church can decide what will happen after death how church can decide okay and it means that only the upper class people have the right they will they can purchase they can only the purchase this one so the martin luther had challenged this idea this challenging of the idea in the this challenging of the idea in the european history this challenging of the idea of the martin luther in the european history is known as reformation is hum kya bolte hain reformation bolte hain so in this this idea of reformation that happens in the 16th century this led to the this led to the rise of new religion within christianity that is a protestant that is a protestant religion hai na so this become protestant and before protestant before protestant the earlier church which was there it was the catholic one so before protestant they were catholic so catholic are the very orthodox people catholic are the very orthodox people whereas the protestant are very much liberal people protestants are very much the liberal people they were not interfering into the state matter now there are the rise of new new numerous state there is a rise of new new numerous state so we have seen the rise of absolutist power rise of absolutist power we are we can say abso absolutist state came into existence came into existence in europe because all of these new rulers were supporting the protestant religion the protestant was very much liberal whereas the catholic were very much powerful the catholic religion they were leading of the world the europe from the rome so from the rome their main center was in rome and from rome they were they were dictating the world the whole european world through the pope so pope was the center of this authority so the pope authority was challenged by the reformations and the rise of new new states came into existence so this is a background of the 9th century to the 16th century we have discussed with you in this extent we have the spain portugal then we have france then britain then russia these are the powerful states which came into existence by this time okay so when so now let us understand one more topic about it that within this time there was a scientific revolution also okay the scientific revolution played a very important role so now we will go into the topic by one by one so one question was asked in the upsc history optional examination this question was asked in 2020 you can see this question the question says that the principles of enlightenment the principles of enlightenment the principles of enlightenment were in some ways a continuous of the discoveries and the theories of the scientific revolution okay the principles of the enlightenment were in some ways a continuation of the discoveries and the theories of the scientific revolution critically examined so in this question we will write about what are the principles of enlightenment i will just discuss after few minutes what is the principles of enlightenment and then we will write about what kinds of discoveries are done by this time you already know that in this time the discovery of telescope microscope pendulum clock thermometer barometer and air pump in this time we have the person called nicolas copernicus isaac newton are the main persons who have done the research so these are the examples you can say that we have the scientists like galileo galileo has worked in the physics and studied in asia we have kepler he developed laws of planetary motion isaac newton he formulated the laws of motion and expanded calculus we have abraham darby introduced coal as a fuel for the blast furnace earlier the people were using coal coal used karte the ab coal use kar rahe coal was more productive and powerful then we have bimond he invented blast technique for the pig iron john k he invented flying shuttle for the weaving spinning jenny was invented by hargreaves then we have arkwright he started the water powered spinning machine james watt started the invented the steam engine so these all led to the rise of industrial revolution industrial revolution 
in Europe that we will do in the other chapters. Okay, so now let us go into discuss in more detail about what is enlightenment and what is the main purpose, what is the main feature. These all events are connected to the enlightenment, and we will see some of the questions also. So this is enlightenment, which is coming into the 17th and the 18th century, and this is the main purpose of them. The enlightenment undermined. The first of all, the enlightenment had undermined the authority of the monarchy and the Catholic Church. The monarchy could not be so much powerful, they said, and then especially it is about the Catholic Church also. Church ke power ko inonne undermine kia. They demanded, they demanded the freedom and the liberty of the people. They demanded the freedom and the liberty of the people and then they had contributed for the development of the self rule for the development of the ideas of the self rule and democracy this is the main purpose of the enlightenment it had undermined authority and the monarchy authority of the monarchy and the catholic church it demanded for the freedom and the liberty for the people and it contributed for the self rule and democracy this is the main purpose of enlightenment main theme of enlightenment in the in the enlightenment they have done this something very important and this is the most important philosophy in the enlightenment we will discuss deism liberation republicanism conservation toleration and the scientific progress let us discuss that what are the main themes the enlightenment people believes in deism deism means deism is a philosophy that talks about there is existence of power there is existence of higher power or creator so they believe that there is a god there is a, there is a existence of higher power or creator but he rejects the idea of divine intervention in the human affair he rejects the idea of the divine inter, divine intervention in the human affair matlab god cannot interfere into the human affair if god cannot interfere into the human affair then why church is interfering right so it basically challenges the church power here at this time this is a deism we have the american person like thomas jefferson and benjamin franklin they had supported this idea these people discuss for the scientific progress it refers to the culminative advancement of knowledge and understanding through the scientific method it involves that we should have observation experimentations and the formulation of theories to explain the natural phenomena they had discuss on this topic they discuss about toleration that there should be the existence of diverse societies diverse culture by this time okay they discuss about liberalism liberalism is a political and the philosophical idea which emphasizes the individual right liberty equality and the rule of law it often advocates for the democratic governments democratic governments free market and the protection of the civil liberties this is the main purpose of enlightenment okay they discuss about the republicanism republicanism is a political ideology that advocates for a republic where a state of the head where the head of the state is elected and represents the people but it was completely against the idea of conservatism conservatism ke khilaf the so this is the main component and the ideas of enlightenment okay so these are the important peoples let us discuss who are important part of the enlightenment one such person is a martin luther he has written the 95 thesis we have just discussed in this 95 thesis he asked he asked the church to respond these things and and the follower the followers of the martin luther the followers of the martin luther the followers of the martin luther have made a new set within uh, christianity that is known as a protestant and a protestant christian protestant christians okay they have established themselves as a protest protestant christians uh, the followers of the martin luther was john calvin he is the other person who played a very crucial role in the in the development of the protestant church in europe john calvin is this person then we have john lot he says that what worries you masters you what worries you masters you hai na so he was english philosopher okay whose works prevail in the foundation of the modern political philosophies okay he especially discuss about many such things he discuss about he discuss about that his political thought was grounded on the notion of the social contact between the citizen and the importance of the toleration hai na he argued that everyone has a natural right to life liberty and property hai na and the government must not disrupt this right what is his argument his argument is that that he argued that everyone has a natural right 
टू लाइफ लिबर्टी एंड प्रॉपर्टी एंड गवर्नमेंट मस्ट नॉट डिस्टर्ब दिस राइट दिस इज अ मेन पर्पज ऑफ जॉन लॉट है ना तो जॉन लॉट ही इज डिफाइंड एज द फादर ऑफ द मॉडर्न लिजिलिज्म ही इज द फादर ऑफ द मॉडर्न लिबरलिज्म ओके जॉन लॉट बाय द वन पर्सन देन अदर पर्सन बाय द मॉन्टेस्ट्यू है ना ही हैज रिटन अ बुक कॉल स्पीड ऑफ द लॉज he has written the speed of the laws and he discusses about the division of power he say that power should be divided into three part one is a executive power legislative so he is the first person to do so legislative and then judiciary so he discusses that power should be divided into three branches but he does not support the democracy it doesn't mean that he support the democracy he said that there should be king there should be king who should divide the power and there should be three different department who should work for executive legislative and judiciary if these people are corrupt then kings should punish them so kings should be there to appoint them kings should be there to punish them this is the main argument of montesquieu he did not even think of the possible overthrow of the french monarchy he was from france as a solution to the prevailing political conditions in france he was a great supporter of the constitutional monarchy he was not a supporter of the republican state or not he said that this power division of power is very important for the check and balance purpose ha na he was not so much radical ha na he wanted to do the reforms within the existing society within the existing society ke andar ho ye kaam karna chahte the theek hai apart from it what we see we have the world here he says that when eating fruit think of the person who planted the tree okay he was completely against the church church ke bahut khilaf the he argued that the society is part of its evils and just principles he was so much rebel this voltaire was so much rebel that he was expelled from france inko france se bahar dhakta di gaya na he was expelled from france okay then we have he was a rebel the every ruler of europe was not happy with him only one person who was supporting this person voltaire was the king frederick the great of persia once upon a time when he died there is a official call abbe he had given his last rites for his dead body that person abbe had been suspended and dismissed from the post he was so disliked by the rulers of the whole europe except persia okay so he was completely talking about this so you know ne two books sabse important likha hai one book that he has written is a letter of philosophies and the candid in the letter of philosophies this is a uh, conversation of the two philosophers who had visited paris he defines that what is a condition of society in this letter of paris in the candid candid is a novel it, it's a it's a mythical novel in 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 which he talks about a state that does not exist he said that every is good in the state every one is equally living sab log ek sath reh rahe hain ek sath reh rahe hain the king and the people are same there is no division of state there is no division of people among the religion so he discuss about a welfare egalitarian society in this book called candid candid is a novel mythical novel this novel mein define karte hain so this had played a very important role like the people who were reading these novels were influencing that if this novel has a so many good characters why these things are not in our life why are we so being exploited okay so these people had been uh, the peoples in paris and other people uh, other people of france were very much influenced from the letters of philosophies and the candid book written by voltaire he is the other famous philosopher of the enlightenment then we have the person called jean jacques rousseau इन्होंने तीन चार बुक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट लिखी है इन द डिस्कोर्स ऑफ इन इक्वलिटी इन द डिस्कोर्स ऑफ इन इक्वलिटी ही डिफाइंस दैट द सोसाइटी इज फुल ऑफ इन इक्वलिटी इट शुड बी इलिमिनेटेड द ही फॉरवर्डेड सेशन हाउ टू इलिमिनेट द इन इक्वलिटीज ये पहली बुक है इन द सेकेंड बुक ही डिस्कस अबाउट सोशल कंटेंट In this book, social contract, he argues that human beings are primarily good by nature. Okay, but it is the society and his participation into the civil society made him corrupt. The you already know everyone is good by nature, and births are अच्छे होते हैं, but society उनको corrupt बना देता है. So he said that the human beings are corrupted by the complex historical events that appear in the present day civil society. He said that. the people joined civil society the people joined civil society via the social contact via the social contact 
टू अचीव द यूनिटी टू अचीव द यूनिटी फाइल प्रिजर्व इन द इंडिविजुअल फ्रीड इफ समन पार्टिसिपेट इन टू द सोसाइटी द कॉन्टेक्ट थ्रू सोशल कॉन्टेक्ट इफ समन वी पार्टिसिपेट इन टू द सिविल सोसाइटी थ्रू कॉन्टेक्ट इट क्लियरली मीन्स दैट इट इट क्लियरली मीन्स दैट हिज इंडिविजुअल राइट शुड नॉट बी काटेल है ना तो इंडिविजुअलिज्म बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है सो इंडिविजुअलिज्म इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट टू मेंटेन दैन सेल्स एंड दे वॉन्टेड टू रिमेन फ्री एंड कंटिन्यू विद द सिविल सोसाइटी सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट था दूसरे बुक है उनकी इमली इमली इज अदर बुक रिटन बाई हिम इमली इन दिस बुक he narrates a story between the teacher and the student so in this uh, russo was a teacher tutor theo and they just student so he discusses that what should be the condition of education he says that the contemporary education is very much organized and restricted by the church and the state in education the student and the student should be free he should learn from the personal experience ha na there should not be burden over him है ना एंड इट्स शुड नॉट बी रिस्ट्रिक्टेड स्टूडेंट शुड बी फ्री तो ही से दैट वी शुड फोकस ऑन द डायरेक्ट लर्निंग एंड स्टूडेंट शुड बी फ्री फ्रॉम द रिस्ट्रिक्शन ही टॉक्स अबाउट द नीड ऑफ इम्पैथी कंपेशन एंड मोरल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन अमॉन द चिल्ड्रेन एंड स्टूडेंट ही डिस्कस अबाउट दिस आइडिया अबाउट रिलीजन ही सेट दैट ही क्रिटिसाइज द ऑर्गेनाइज रिलीजन विच इज फुल ऑफ लोकल ट्रेडिशंस एंड डोगमाज बट ही एडवोकेटेड फॉर द सिविल रिलीजन दैट शुड हैव द मोरल फोर्स दिस इज द मेन व्यूज ऑफ द जैन जीन रिसो जीन जैक्वस रिसो वन क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन एंड टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू इन द हिस्ट्री ऑप्शन एग्जामिनेशन इज दैट एक्सप्लेन द मेजर आइडियाज ऑफ इनलाइटनमेंट डिस्कस द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ रूसो इन द इनलाइटनमेंट तो हमें क्या लिखना है वाट इज द मेजर आइडियाज ऑफ इनलाइटनमेंट दैट वी है जस्ट सीन राइट नाउ i will again discuss in the impact and then we will discuss that what is the russo contribution so we will write about this things whatever there in the ppt if you write this concept in in some analysis two two lines on discourse of inequality social content then education called imli 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 is a novel hai na and then religion two two lines if you write then you can write about the half of answer of the first question and then half should be on the major of the ideas of enlightenment then we have russo kindled the hope russo kindled the hope which became the spirit of enlightenment so is maybe same cheez likhna hai enlightenment ka kya purpose tha inhone kya kiya to ek question aap dekh lo first wala question ka hmm to uh, discourse on origin of the inequality we will write our answer like this one aap log video ko pause karke thoda padh sakte hain theek hai in in which we will discuss what is the discourse on the origin of inequality he discuss about he, he discuss about social contact जो मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया आपको ही डिस्कस अवर एजुकेशन ही डिस्कस अवर रिलीजन सो इफ यू राइट अबाउट दिस फोर पॉइंट्स देन योर आंसर विल बी वेरी मच रिटेन है ना बहुत अच्छा लिखा जाएगा देन रूसोज पॉलिटिकल फिलोसफी पर क्वेश्चन आया हुआ था रूसो पॉलिटिकल फिलोसफी कंटेंट्स द सीट्स ऑफ सोशलिज्म एब्सोलिटिज्म एंड डेमोक्रेसी तो इन दिस वी विल राइट अबाउट हु इज रूसो वाई इज फेमस एंड वाट आर द बुक्स रिटर्न बाई रूसो रूसो ने कौन कौन सी किताबें लिखी हैं वी विल राइट अबाउट दैट and then we will write about this theory concept jo isne pucha exam mein uh, socialism absolutism and democracy if i explain you these terms let me make it clear socialism mein rousseau crit uh, rousseau critique of inequalities produced by the modern society his advocacy for the return to a natural state of man and his disdain of the private property his disdain of the private property and industrialization laid the ground work of the socialist thought he believed that civilization had been corrupted civilization had corrupted the humanity and promoted a return to a more egalitarian society so this is a socialism of rousseau he talks about absolutism kya baat karte hain that he discussed the concept of sovereignty that he believed that this sovereignty should be reside in the hand of the people है ना इन द हैंड ऑफ द पीपल सो ये जो टर्म्स है ये एब्सोलिज्म की बात करता है ओके देन डेमोक्रेसी है ना हिज कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द जनरल बिल ही कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द जनरल बिल मे बी सीम ऑथोरिटेरियन इन इट्स असरसन सबसे बड़ा पॉइंट है ही आइडिया ही हिज आइडिया दैट लिजिटिमेट पॉलिटिकल अथॉरिटी लिजिटिमेट पॉलिटिकल अथॉरिटी डिराइव्स फ्रॉम द वन सेट ऑफ ऑल द पीपल 
and is emphasizes on the common good as determined by the general will it this idea his idea of the general will is form of democracy to unte book ko explain karte hain jitne bhi char book humne dekha tha his discourse social contact imli and etc then we will discuss about these three terms and we have a very good answer of this question ek conclusion a conclusion ho sakta hai in summary or in summary Rousseau's political philosophy encompasses a diverse array of ideas that anticipate elements of socialism, absolutism, and democracy. His critique of modern society, advocacy for the collective sovereignty, and the emphasis on the common good reflect a nuanced understanding of political theory that continues to influence debates about the governance and societies to these also to this day also. so we will write we will student we will write about these things and these things will help us a lot by this time hai na ye hame isko samajhne mein bahut had tak help karega theek hai to isko hum bolte hain enlightenment all right read us the other questions here it is a immanuel kant immanuel kant say what is enlightenment so by answering the question what is enlightenment he say enlightenment means dear to be wise इनलाइटन में मतलब होता है डेयर टू बी वाइज आर यू वाइज राइट नाउ अगर गवर्नमेंट कुछ कर रही है बोल पाओगे है ना इफ यू आर फेमस पर्सन यू आर डूइंग गवर्नमेंट जॉब एट अ गुड पोजिशन यू कैंट स्पीक एनी थिंग यू विल बी पुट इन जेल राइट द पॉइंट इज दैट इट इज डेयर टू बी वाइज कैन यू क्वेश्चन एवरी थिंग कैन यू क्वेश्चन द गवर्नमेंट सो दिस इज द टर्म्स ही सेज दैट इट इज अबाउट द डेयर टू बी वाइज एंड ही चैलेंज दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ही सेज दैट देयर आर ओनली फ्यू पीपल इन द एटीन सेंचुरी हु आर इनलाइटेंड okay they were talking about the enlightenment idea but he give a sentence that the age was itself not enlightened 18th century was an enlightened age because the everyone was not enlightenment hai na there was corruption there was absolutism bahut sara problem tha ye bolte hain he should think for oneself sab ye pehle kya bolte he should think for oneself he discuss about free of external authority dictates hai na ye sabse bada difference hai इनके कई सारी बुक है डिफरेंस बिटवीन रेशनलिटी एंड द ह्यूमन एक्सपीरियंस इस बुक की क्रिटिसिज्म ऑफ प्योर रीजन ही डिस्कस अबाउट क्रिटिक ऑफ द प्रैक्टिकल रीजन इन सब सब के बात करते हैं आई विल डिस्कस इज आइडियाज सो डिफरेंट बिटवीन रेशनलिस्ट एंड द एम्प्रिलिस्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम इज द रीजन इज द अल्टीमेट वे टू गेन द नॉलेज ये बात करते हैं ही देन डिस्कस अबाउट द यूनिवर्सल मॉरल लॉ He said that universal moral law is more powerful and good as compared to the state law. When there is a contradiction in the state law, universal moral law is more important. मतलब जो humanity का जो law है, that is the law of the nature is more important than the law of the state. He discuss about that. Let us discuss few questions related to Immanuel Kant. This will help you to understand a lot. One question is that he Voltaire was living in the age of enlightenment. The age itself was not enlightened. Immanuel Kant. क्या बोलता है? ये क्वेश्चन जो आप पढ़ रहे हो, the question says that Voltaire was living in the age of enlightenment. The age itself was not enlightened. है ना? It is Immanuel Kant. सही बोल रहा है ना? That if he was not enlightenment, right? There are only few philosophers. तो इस क्वेश्चन को आप इस तरह से लिखोगे तो आपका आंसर बहुत अच्छा लिखा जाएगा. The Kant's perspective on the enlightenment. The, what is this? Kant's perspective on the enlightenment underscores the notion. that simply living in area simply living in era characterized by intellectual and philosophical advancement does not guarantee enlightenment of the individuals for our society as a whole sabse par hum likhte hain kant's concept of enlightenment ye bolte hain enlightenment hota kya hai he said he believe that laziness and the cowardice Lead individuals to accept the immaturity and obedience to the traditional authorities this is against enlightenment He said there are the limitations in the enlightenment. इसको बात करेंगे. Failure to achieve enlightenment, how enlightenment could not happen, है ना? And the the continued need for the progress. He discuss about these terms, so you will be able to answer a very good answer in this question. Then we have Immanuel Kant. Hmm. इस पे क्या है? इस बुक पे देखो. Kant's redefinition of reason. The question is the first one. Question है. Kant's redefinition of reason and rehabilitation. of conscience mark a high point in intellectual reaction against dominant rationalism of enlightenment this question was asked in 2017 how to answer this question you can answer this question like this way introduction hum likhenge fir hum define karenge what is a redefinition of reason 
ओरिजन को कैसे डिफाइन करते हैं देन वाट इज अ रिहेबिलिटेशन ऑफ ट्रांस साइंस एंड देन वाट इज अ क्रिटिक ऑफ ट्रांस अप्रोच यू कैन पॉज दिस वीडियो और यू कैन वॉच दिस वन एक बार इसको आप समझ लेना सो दिस मे बी द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इमेनुअल ट्रांस then we have this is the impact of enlightenment the most important impact we have find is the it had improved women's right it had brought natural judicial system it has increased the education opportunities it discussed for the renovation of economic theories rich area of literature and music came into existence thinking and the feeling of the people became more it had brought modernity nationalism rationalism imperialism deism atheism and decolonization decolonization is a process where the country becomes independent okay. apart from it the many states were there who invited the enlightened thinkers to make their laws apne kanun banane ke liye bahut sare enlightenment ko laya hai na there are some rulers like frederick the great of persia catherine the great of russia and joseph ii of austria these people had invited a lot in the bringing of the this thinkers to make the state laws in the in the enlightenment it played a very important role in the rise of french revolution in 1789 hai na iske liye bahut important tha it had brought the cultural impacts on the art middle class new philosophies developed hua enlightenment led to the the origin of intellectual salons france mein salon is a place of gossip where the people used to meet read newspaper and the magazines and they make a gossip then we have coffee house कॉफी हाउस भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट था बना सो नाउ लेट अस सी दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इलाइटनमेंट दैट यू कैन डिस्कस इलाइटनमेंट मतलब क्या होता है मैंने समझाया क्या वाट इज द क्वेश्चन वाट इज द आइडिया दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट आइडियाज एंड द प्रिंसिपल लेट अस सी पहला है रेशनलिज्म सेकेंड नेचुरलिज्म रेशनलिज्म नेचुरलिज्म इंडिविजुअलिज्म ह्यूमनिज्म लिबरलिज्म constitutionalism scientific logical and the rational outlook and egalitarianism these are the most important concept of enlightenment and we should answer any questions so whatever questions we have seen it will be answer to any questions manlo question se dekhte hain what was enlightened about the age of enlightenment ye sawal puch raha hai enlightened tha kya to aapko define karna hai isme jo principles hai hai na enlightenment matlab it question it अंडरमाइन द ऑथोरिटी ऑफ चर्च एंड द स्टेट पावर पहली पॉइंट है इट डिमांडेड फॉर द इक्वलिटी ऑफ पीपल इट डिमांडेड फॉर द प्रोग्रेस इट वर्क फॉर द सेल्फ रूल डेमोक्रेसी की बात करना है इट डिमांडेड फॉर द लिबर्टी एंड द इक्वलिटी ऑफ द पीपल ये लिखेंगे देन वी विल डिस्क्रेस अबाउट दीज थिंग्स रेशनलिज्म नेशनलिज्म ह्यूमनिज्म इंडिविजुअल लिबरलिज्म के बारे में लिखेंगे एंड देन वी विल राइट अबाउट Who are the most important philosophers in this period? क्या नाम था जॉन लॉक रूसो वर्ल्टेयर मॉन्टेस्ट्रो एंड इमेनुअल कांत यू बी राइट अबाउट देम वी आर गोइंग टू राइट अ वेरी गुड आंसर ऑन दिस क्वेश्चन यू विल गेट मोर देन इन दिस क्वेश्चन द टेन में से आपको कम से कम सात आठ नंबर मिल जाएंगे इस तरह से पॉइंट्स लिखते हैं तो प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इलाइटनमेंट प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इलाइटनमेंट वर इन सम वेज आर कंटिन्यूस ऑफ द डिस्कवरीज ओके एंड द थ्योरीज ऑफ द साइंटिफिक रिवोल्यूशन क्रिटिकली एग्जामिन ये क्वेश्चन भी बहुत अच्छी है इनलाइटनमेंट रिप्रेजेंटेड अल्टरनेटिव अप्रोच टू मॉडर्निटी अल्टरनेटिव हैबिट्स ऑफ माइंड एंड हार्ट ऑफ कंसाइंस एंड सेंसिबिलिटी डिस्कस अफकोर्स जितने भी चीज हमने जो बात की अगर उसी को एक्सप्लेन करें तो दैट विल बी द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो दिस इज द इनलाइटनमेंट स्टूडेंट आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड द टॉपिक अगर आपको ज़्यादा डिटेल में पढ़ना है तो मतलब यू कैन ऑल्सो ज्वाइन आवर प्लूटस आई एस क्लासेस यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट आवर मैनेजमेंट एंड टीम एंड यू कैन ज्वाइन विद इन द ऑफलाइन सेशन ऑनलाइन सेशन ऑल्सो एंड इफ यू वांट टू डू सेल्फ प्रिपरेशन देन यू कैन ऑल्सो स्टार्ट द वन बुक इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट आई हैव सजेस्टेड यू कैन रीड एनी ऑफ द बुक आउट ऑफ दैट एंड देन यू कैन बाय अ पी वाई इन द मार्केट एंड यू कैन वर्क हार्ड ऑन दैट एंड ऑल्सो यू कैन कमेंट इन अवर फेसबुक चैनल यूट्यूब चैनल इंस्टाग्राम चैनल एंड इफ यू इफ हैव एनी क्वेरी रिलेट टू सम क्वेश्चन दैट इज अराइज इन दिस टॉपिक इन लाइटनमेंट you can feel free to comment in the youtube channel and i will be happy to reply at the youtube platform you can also ask me to make me any videos on any such topic if you want to do so okay okay so we'll see you in another video thank you so much